Hi everybody! So recently, 46% of you guys have voted for a Kiwi mobile app project. And while I'm still working on it, I thought it would be nice to film a quick introduction to Kiwi just to make sure we are getting familiar with some of the commands. So today, we are going to build a very simple greeting app where we fill in our name and we get a hello greeting in return. We will begin by installing Kiwi inside our working environment. Now, because I'm using Anaconda, I'm going to type conda install-c conda-forge Kiwi. And if you guys are not using Anaconda, you can install it with pip install Kiwi. Next, we will copy the starter code from the description of the video and we will paste it inside a code editor. Then we will save this code as a Python file somewhere on our computer. In my case, I'm going to call this file say hello.py. And now we can go ahead and run this file just to have a quick peek. We will open our terminal once again. We will type cd, which stands for change directory, and we will paste the same folder where we saved our app. And once we're in the correct folder, we will simply type python say hello.py and enter. And once we do that, we get a brand new blank interface window popping out and the name of this window will be 100% match to the name of your app class. And before we proceed with adding widgets, let's quickly go over the starter code. So with these commands, we are importing all the different widgets we will use for our app. And right below, we are initializing our window object by creating a class for our app. And even though we were able to get away with using classes during our Tkinter, our DearPy, and our PyQt5 project, you cannot avoid classes with Kiwi. So realistically, the only requirement that Kiwi has is an app class with a build method that can be ran as soon as your Python file is being executed. Cool. Now let's begin by setting the number of columns we would like our grid layout to have. We will do this by typing self.window.calls equals one at least in my case. And if you guys have any questions regarding classes or the self keyword, definitely leave me a comment below. I want all of us to be comfortable with classes before we move on with building the actual mobile app with Kiwi. Now, in order to place widgets inside our window object, we will type self.window.add underscore widget. We'll open a set of brackets and inside them, we will specify the type of widget we would like to add. Now, in my case, I'm going to start with an image widget with a capital I. We will open a brand new set of brackets where the source attribute will equal the URL of our image file. In my particular case, that would be logo.png because my image is saved in the exact same folder as my say hello file. And once we run this file, this is the result we get. Now, if you guys want to use the exact same logo that I'm using, just simply download it from a GitHub account. Next, we will add a label widget with a capital L where the text equals to what's your name. And we will call this widget self.greeting. Then we will copy this command from above. We'll paste it right underneath and we will specify self.greeting inside the add widget brackets. And once we save and rerun this file, we can see our label inside the window. Okay, now let's go ahead and collect some user input. For this, we will type self.user equals text input in camo case. And since my particular app is only asking for a name input, I'm going to set the multi-line attribute to false. And once we initialized our input widget, we can go ahead and add it to our window. We will copy this add widget command and we will paste our user variable right inside it. And once we save and rerun our file, we can see a brand new input inside our window. We can type our text inside it and it will only take in a single line. As soon as you type enter, nothing happens. And last but not least, we will add a button widget by typing self.button equals button with a capital B where the text equals to greet. 
in all caps. And then we will add this widget to our window by typing self.window.add underscore widget and inside the round brackets self.button. And once we rerun this file, we can see our greet button was added to the page. But if we try to click it, nothing really happens. And that's because we haven't attached a callback function to this button just yet. So let's define our callback function first. To do this, we would have to leave the scope of our build method and we will call this function callback. This function takes in two parameters. The first parameter is always self and the second parameter would be the instance, which you can also call event or whichever way you'd like. Now, what I would like to do within the function is to change the text of our label from what's your name to hello Maria or hello to whichever name we type inside the input. To do this, we will type self.greeting.text, which will target the text attribute of our greeting label. And this will equal to hello space, where we concatenate the self.user dot text attribute, which is the input we collected from our user that should include his name. And in the very, very end, we will concatenate an exclamation point. Now, the only thing left to do is to connect our callback function to a button press event. And we will do this right before we are adding the button to our window. We will type self dot button dot bind. And inside the round brackets, we'll specify that on press, we would like to call the self.callback function. And since we've defined our callback function within the scope of our app class, we must refer it as self.callback rather than just callback. And actually, when I'm looking in this, I am missing my return statement, which is right below my callback function, and it shouldn't be there. So let's paste it in the correct spot. And now we can go ahead and type some kind of a string, let's say Maria, and we will test our greet button. Perfect, so our label changes to hello Maria. Good job. And now once we added all the functionality to our app, we can move on with styling it. So we will begin by designing our window object. And what I would like to do is I would like to include some margins along the sides and along the top and the bottom of our app. To do this, we will type self.window dot size underscore hint, which will equal to a tuple where the side margins will be 60% and the top and bottom margins would be 70%. And since our window object is quite smaller now, it's important to place it along the center. To do this, we will type self dot window dot pause hint as position hint. And this time it equals a dictionary where the center x key equals to 0 0.5, as well as the center y key also equals 0 0.5. Sorry if my head is blocking it. And once we save this file and rerun it, we can already tell that our app looks so much better. Next, we will add some styling to our label widget. To do this, I'm going to arrange my code slightly differently. I hope you guys like it. And we will add the styling attributes right inside our label definition. So the first thing I would like to do is I would like to increase the font a little bit. That's why we'll type font underscore size equals 18. And I would also like to add a color to this particular label. And in my case, it would be the turquoise color, the same as my logo. And you guys can just type it in. It's 00FFCE. And once we rerun our app, we can see that our text is now turquoise and slightly larger. Now, let's move on with tackling our input field. Now, if you guys noticed on your end, whenever we type something, the padding is quite awful. There is way too much room between the bottom and our text, and there's way too little room between the top and our text. So let's first tackle this. So first, we will slightly rearrange our code just to make everything a bit more readable. And then we will add padding underscore y, which equals a tuple where the padding from the top to the text will equal 20 pixels. And the padding from the bottom to the text will also equal 20 pixels. 
Now, in the next line of code, I would like to make this input field slightly shorter because it's very, very tall. And we can easily do this by specifying a size hint once again, which will equal to a tuple where the width doesn't change. So I'm keeping it at 100%, which equals to one. But the height, I would love to change it to be, let's say, half of what it is right now. And we will do this by typing 0.5. 50%. And now when we look inside our input field and type something inside it, it makes much more sense. And lastly, we will tackle the styling of our button. Now, in my particular case, I would like my input field to match the size of my button. For this, I will type size hint once again, and a tuple where I'm not changing the width, but I am decreasing the height by half. Now, I would also like to have a bold text. That's why I will type bold equals true. And I would also like to change the background color of my button from the default gray to a nice turquoise. That's why I'll type background color equals the exact same turquoise color that we set our label to. But a curious thing will happen if we'll try to save this file and rerun it we can see that the background color of our button is actually quite darker than the color we specified. Now, in my particular case, it looks great and I would like to keep it that way. But if you guys want to fix it on your end, all you need to do is to add a background normal attribute that equals an empty string. And if you do that and rerun your file, you are getting the exact same color you specified. Now for my particular app, this is a bit too much. So I'm gonna reverse it back to the darker color. And once we're happy with our app, we can go ahead and test it. Now, the first thing I'd like to check is what happens when we play with the size of our window. Cool, so you guys can see that doesn't matter how big our window is or how small our window is, the proportion between our widgets remains the same. That means that our app will look great across multiple devices. And the second test will be the functionality of our app. So first, let's say hello to myself. Hello, Maria. Let's say hello to my cat. Perfect. And lastly, let's say hello to Slenderman that lives somewhere here in the forest. Just to be polite, we will type Slenderman greet. Hello, Slenderman. See, we included everybody. Good job. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, a comment, maybe subscribe to my channel or share this video with your friends and family because each and every one of these actions is helping me a lot. And if you're using this tutorial to build a different kind of project, also please share it with me because I would love to see what you guys come up with. Now, thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.